years. Joining me now, the chair of the House Intel Committee, Democrat and California Congressman Adam Schiff. Welcome back to Sunday Morning Matters and Happy New Year to you. To you too and to all your viewers. You know, can you put into words uh, what you're witnessing on the House floor? We've talked with the Congressman Valadeo. He put it into words. What is it for you? Well, it's a spectacle that the country hasn't seen in more than 100 years. Um, and I'm not sure what to make of it, uh, except that the other side is deeply divided. Um, and if they can't even arrive at the most simplest of tasks, which is choosing someone to be their leader, choosing someone to be the speaker for the Congress, uh, then I shudder to think of what the next two years are gonna look like because you know, let's say that Kevin McCarthy ultimately makes enough concessions to get the support he needs to become speaker. He's given away all the power of that office. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently part of this new proposal is that a single member can call for a vote to unseat the speaker, which means that when any of these members decide they don't like what he's doing, they can, they can put the country through another several days of these uh, votes. So uh, it doesn't bode well, um, and it certainly is a sharp contrast to where the Democratic members of Congress are you know, completely united behind Hakeem Jeffries. You know, it's well documented. You and Valley Congressman Kevin McCarthy really don't see eye to eye. I think I'm being politically correct here a little <laughs> bit, right? But should he be in line to become House Speaker with Republicans now owning majority in the House? Well, uh, you know, it, that depends on who the Republicans want to lead. And I think the problem, and you're right, I don't have a particularly good or close relationship with Kevin McCarthy. Uh, I think the problem he's facing, though, is the same problem I faced with him, which is I think his own members don't trust him. Uh, and, you know, without that kind of trust, without that confidence, without knowing really what does the person stand for, uh, what is their core conviction, what is their ideology, it has to be something more than self. Uh, and I do think that, um, that anyone else seeing that they lack the votes uh, wouldn't be trading away the powers of the office. They would step aside and decide that, you know, somebody else, I guess, is going to lead the conference. So, you know, uh, you know it, it really has to be somebody that can lead. And so far, we haven't seen that. As you know, if Congressman McCarthy does finally become speaker, he has publicly said time and time again that he will strip you of your chair of House Intel Committee. What are your thoughts on that as you see what's happening unfold? Well, this is one of the many concessions he's had to make. Uh, and maybe he's happy to make it, but it's, a, I think, a concession to Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, to the leader of the QAnon uh, caucus within the Republican members to get her support. And, you know, it shows, uh, I think, that uh, he has no interest in the institution um, and that he's simply willing to do what even the most extreme members of his conference demand. Uh, so, uh, you know, frankly, I'm far more concerned about what uh, a McCarthy speakership would mean if we have another contested presidential election. Because after the last one, after the last uh, attempted insurrection, mm -hmm. Kevin McCarthy still voted to overturn the results of the election. And let's say that in 2024, we have a, a close, a legitimately close presidential election uh, where there is a, a an issue over who won, not like the last one, which really wasn't that close. Um, again, I would fear Kevin McCarthy would do the wrong thing to placate Donald Trump or someone else, merely to keep his job, not fulfill his oath of office uh, and, uh, and and vote for the, the legitimate slate of electors. So that to me is the mm. predominant concern, not what happens with my presence on the Intelligence Committee. You know, I wanna finish with this. Uh, it's no secret you are interested in taking over Senator Feinstein's seat. You have said that publicly. I, I know you haven't said that a lot lately, but you know, we've heard it. Um, she's not made plans, as you know, to retire before 2024. Do you expect her to retire before that or, you know, finish her term? And then will you, are you really publicly ready to say you wanna run to become Senator Feinstein's successor? You know, I think Senator Feinstein uh, has made it clear she's going to finish her term. Uh, she hasn't uh, made any public statement about what she will do afterwards in terms of whether she runs again. Uh, and let me just say, I have, you know, enormous respect for the senator. I've worked closely with her. Uh, she is the senior most Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee and, and myself chairing the House Intelligence Committee. And I have just great admiration for what she's done for the state. 
Should she decide that she isn't going to run again, uh, I've gotten a lot of encouragement uh, to do so, and it's something I'm giving very serious consideration. I got about 30 seconds, may be loaded here, but the January 6th, the final report was a criminal referral to the DOJ. Are you expecting the DOJ to follow through and, and even consider that referral? Uh, yes, I, I expect they'll certainly give it consideration. I, I think they're doing, obviously, investigating a lot of these issues uh, already. Um, but I'm you know, going to hold them to their commitment, which is to follow the evidence wherever it leads. And that evidence has led to the former president, uh, as well as others. Uh, and there has to be only one standard for the rule of law. It needs to be applied equally to former presidents and ordinary citizens alike. Congressman, thank you so much for joining me here on Sunday Morning Matters. Look forward to having you on in this year and beyond. Appreciate the time. Thank you.